Okay. So in the last class, uh, we had uh, done about Pelton turbine and uh, Francis turbine. Okay. And uh, now we'll see about the Kepler turbine. So the figure that you can see over here is the drawing that we have to draw when they ask for about to explain a Kepler turbine. Yeah. So basically, first we have to uh, draw the front and the top view. This is the top view. And this is the uh, sectional front view of the turbine for a Kepler turbine. So let me explain this. It is almost very similar to that of a Francis turbine. The construction is little bit uh, different. Okay. Now over here, what happens is that, uh, now first let us take up the uh, top view that is shown over here. Okay, so when we look from the top, it looks like a concentric rings, okay, that has been placed. There's an inlet for the water, which is connected from the penstock, and this penstock is connected from the reservoir. So the water inlet is going to be from here, okay. And when we see here, uh, this outermost boundary is nothing but the casing for the Kepler turbine. And after that, the next concentric inner diameter to that, inside that we have the guide vanes or the guide blades, very much similar to that of a Francis turbine. And concentrating to that, once again, we have the, uh, the runner blades or the turbine blades connected to the, to the shaft that is over here at the center. Okay. Now they have written one uh, line and with an X mark on both, nothing but indicating that in this particular region, they are going to cut. They're going to cut from top to bottom, from top to bottom, okay? And then when you look from here, standing in front of it, what are the components? Uh, that is the guide blade, the turbine blades, the shaft, where is, where is, it, is it exactly positioned? is what we can see only when we have the cut section of this. So after doing the cut section only, we'll be able to see this front view, which is actually a sectional front view. Okay, now for a simple understanding, I'll just explain this, what is this uh, sectional view? Okay, so if you take up a cake, okay, you cut that cake, okay, you cut that cake, usually the cake is made up of two layers or three layers, and upon that we have the cream that has been pasted. Right, when you cut that cake, okay, and you t remove one piece out of it, then looking in front of that, okay, from the cake, okay, looking at front, in front of the cake, you can see how many layers is being utilized to make up that cake and what is the thickness of the cream that has been added up and all those things, right? So before cutting the cake, we cannot see how many layers it is actually made up of. So it is very much similar to that. That is a cut section. So only after we cut the cake, we can see how many layers it has been made up of. So if you generally take up the black forest cake, it is made up of three layers, right? Made up of chocolate, three layers. In between, it has been sandwiched with cream, right? So without cutting that, we cannot see how many layers it has been made up of. So similarly, unless and until we cut here from top to bottom, okay, and then looking in front of it, we cannot see what is the, uh, what are the components inside this. So once when we cut from top to bottom, Okay, and then when we look standing in front of it, we'll be able to see these components. So here, what and all we have? So here at the center, we have the shaft. Okay, and the shaft has been coupled with this runner blades and this hub. So this very much looks similar to this diagram over here. Very much if you see uh, in the movies, we'd have uh, visualized uh, the propellers of a ship, right? So it is very much similar to that. Okay, the shape is almost similar to that of a ship propeller, which, uh, which carries the uh, blades, right? And then after that, here we can see that uh, what is over here at this corner is nothing but the guide veins or the guide blades, which is going to guide the flow of water towards the center. So if you look at this, the, there's a shaft at the center, guide blades next outside, then outside to that concentric, going outside from the center to the peripheral, then we have the guide blades, then concentric to that, 
going much more far away from the center we have this casing which has been shown over here as a uh, rounded region over here because it's a circular tube spiral in shape okay so once when you cut we get to see that tube cross section over here so this is the casing of this okay right so now what happens over here is that uh, the water enters from the reservoir through the penstock at high pressure and goes around this casing that is it goes around this casing this tube region okay and once it goes around this tube region what happens there is this guide blades which is placed in a circumferential manner right so this uh, water is going to be drawn in as it passes over this spiral casing now during this time what happens a portion of the water tries to enter towards the center from the periphery it starts to enter towards the center so this guide blades uh, guides the flow of water from the outermost casing or from the periphery and pushes them towards the center so that this water will start flowing onto the uh, turbine blades so what is going to happen a portion of water is going to be di di uh, diverted towards the center over here then some more portion of water over here the portion of water that escapes in this region will be over here so this entire casing will be actually filled up with water and in all the guide blades will be pushing this water towards the center now what happens is that uh, once this guide blade is going to push this water uh, towards the center this turbine blade is going to come in contact with this water so this this water is going to fall onto this turbine blades at high pressure so we will have this water entering at high pressure this high pressure water is being diverted towards the center so that it goes and uh, fall uh, it goes and flows onto the turbine blades uh, that is present towards the center so what happens at high pressure this since it uh, flows over the turbine blades it causes this rotational movement of the turbine ultimately rotating the uh, shaft also so the one end of this shaft is connected to this turbine the other end of the shaft will be connected to the generator through which power is being developed okay so this is what actually happens in a kepler turbine the next part is that very similar to a francis turbine there is a draft tube which is over here we can see this uh, conical section okay so this is nothing but the draft tube which is generally placed at the outlet of the turbine at the outlet of the turbine the water is in is going to enter here at the topmost portion water is going to after flowing over this turbine blades it is going to fall down due to gravity so at this outlet section we have this draft tube right so this draft tube plays the same role as that what it played in the francis turbine so it is going to be a conical section right so one portion that is the broader region of this section will be immersed in the tail rays where it consists of water to a certain height okay so it will be filled with water till here and in this place it will be filled with air there will be no water the water level is going to be only till here okay which is the stagnant water the other end of this draft tube will be connected to this turbine okay now this that is the narrower region so now what happens water at high pressure enters into the turbine and flows over the turbine blades okay next what happens but at the same time since this draft tube is immersed in water it is at this draft tube region is at a lower pressure they are not at high pressure they are at lower pressure now what happens we always know that water flows from higher pressure region to lower pressure region so thereby what happens the water is entering at high pressure but at the other end there is a low pressure that is present in the draft tube that is at the exit of the turbine so water is going to be drawn at much more higher pressure because at the outlet there is a lower pressure but water is entering here at high pressure so the water starts to move at a higher pressure and it starts to go from a higher pressure region to a lower pressure region right so this is what actually happens in a kepler turbine okay but kepler turbine is used for low head dams we had studied in uh, the uh, 
classification of uh, turbines based, based on the head of water available so pelton turbine is used for pelton uh, turbine is used for ಡ್ರೆಡ್ <laughs> <laughs> up to 30 meters of height of water in the reservoir okay that is for low head dams so in this re- case of the dams they will use the kaplan turbine okay next the other thing that we have to see is what is the flow direction or in the water flow direction in this turbine so water actually enters in spirally okay around the surrounding this casing but what we should see is the starting point of flow of water starts from how it enters the turbine that is at at what in what direction does it enter the uh, before the blade and in what direction does it leave the blade so if you look at this water flows from top after going around it goes towards the center where the blades are situated at the lower region so water falls down onto these blades okay so it enters axially flows on to this turbine blades and leaves the turbine axially itself so this type of turbine is going to be an axial flow turbine because it is going to flow parallel to the shaft itself entry is going to be pa- in parallel to the shaft and exit is also going to be parallel to the shaft itself so thereby this turbine is going to be an axial flow turbine so this is the working of the uh kaplan turbine i hope it is clear yes any doubts no oh, sir okay so no, sir. shall we shall we go to the next one yes, yes sir. sir yes okay right so yes sir yes so in your syllabus you all have only these three types of turbines which is the pelton turbine uh kaplan turbine the francis turbine and kaplan turbine okay so for those of you uh, who have not uh, seen the uh, working of uh, francis and uh, pelton turbine uh, uh, the video that i have recorded okay uh, it has been posted on to the mechanical department uh, if it is there i'll share that uh, uh, if uh, that link to you once again so that you can see that and if there is any okay sir you can still clarify okay your doubts right yes sir yeah so the other type uh, of question that they can ask is the difference between impulse turbine and reaction turbine so impulse turbine is basically uh, on which the turbine uh, is going to uh, rotate based on the impact force of water okay right so so the first difference is going to be that the entire hydro energy is going to be converted into kinetic energy which is the working of a pelton turbine so if you look at a pelton turbine what happens is that water enters at high pressure but when it flows out of this nozzle all this high pressure is going to be converted into velocity so there is no pressure over here only high velocity particles are going to impact onto the uh blades of the pelton turbine right so that is one point whereas in reaction turbine okay the turbine is going to rotate because of the pressure difference in the for example in the case of a francis turbine or a kaplan turbine so where there is not much of impact force of water is not required so much at all the main thing is to be the pressure of the water that is to be present okay next thing the next difference is going to be in a impulse turbine draft tube is not at all required but for a reaction turbine since we have to create that pressure difference draft tube is a must it should be there for a any type of reaction turbine right next one the next difference is that uh, the water 
strikes onto some portions or only few buckets of the of the turbine in impulse turbine so if you look over here in pelton turbine water is going to strike only over here but not onto the remaining buckets so only this force is going to cause this rotational moment okay but in a reaction turbine let it be francis turbine or kaplan turbine if you see water is going to flow simultaneously in all turbine blades on all the blades right so there is always a pressure that is going to be created on all the blades of the turbine in a reaction turbine right so thereby what happens in a pressure in a in a reaction turbine the water is going to be in contact with the turbine blades uh, simultaneously at all the blades right so in all the portions of the blade some portion of the water is definitely there so all this are going to act simultaneously and create that pressure energy right so that is the next difference okay the pressure of flowing water remains constant throughout uh, the uh, functioning that is in a pelton turbine where all the pressure is going to be converted into kinetic energy right but over here what will happen is the pressure will be varying from blade to blade right so if you look at the video that i have posted in the google classroom you can clearly see that okay so there what happens is that the pressure is going to be high at some points the pressure is going to be low at certain points so that is going to be there in reaction turbine so this fifth point uh, is same as that of the second point itself that is the runner okay that is the draft tube so it is uh, it is going to it's not so much uh, needed for a impulse turbine but for a reaction turbine we should have a draft tube submerged in water it should not be exposed to the atmosphere so if you look over here if you see here some portion of the draft tube is to be submerged in water okay otherwise this vacuum will not be created it will be exposed directly to the atmospheric air right okay right so this is about uh, the turbines okay this is about the turbines that we have right so any doubts with this turbines any doubts No, no, sir. Please share this material, sir. No. Yeah, I'll share no, this sir. material. I'll I'll share this material. Okay, I'll put it up. There only till differences, sir. Yeah, yeah. It's there up to differences only. So I'll share this. It's already been posted in the classroom, Google Classroom. Okay. Sir, what about IC engines, sir? Thank you, sir. I'll I'll give the size engines. After this, I'll. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So I see engines. Okay, sorry. Now we start the scrubbing again. Yeah. Right. Okay. So we'll move on to I see engines. Uh, the full form is internal combustion engine. I think this stop. Okay. So what is this uh, internal okay. combustion engine? Is that the combustion should takes place inside a confined space. It should not be an open space. okay it should be in a uh, in a confined region through which motion has been generated okay mechanical work has been uh, uh, is been done because of this combustion process so there are two things when we talk about just saying as uh, heat engines or combustion engines it can be classified as internal combustion engine or external combustion engine okay so i'll just take up first one the external combustion engine external combustion engine is where the we are going to burn a coal on a particular stoker last uh, what we have seen in a steam turbine okay that is the uh, uh, wilcox boiler right or the lancaster boiler where it is burnt on a particular uh, region that is the stoker okay and that uh, hot gas is been utilized to flow over the tubes so the combustion of coal doesn't takes place inside a confined region it has been exposed to the atmosphere or an open space so such type of uh, combustion of fuels are come will come under the uh, external combustion engine okay now moving on to internal combustion engine that is the ic engine what we see the petrol engine diesel engine in our two wheelers four wheelers all these are internal combustion engine because the combustion takes place inside the piston cylinder arrangements so after this combustion takes place this piston is going to move down and mechanical work has been done we'll see how the uh, engine works later on okay as of now we'll just remember there are two types of engine one is internal combustion engine 
the other one is an external combustion engine right okay next one is about the classification of ic engines so as we have seen uh, the classification of uh, 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 turbines okay uh, in various ways the, uh, the turbines can be classified similarly uh, an ic engine can also be classified in various ways so one method is by based upon what is the type of fuel that they, that it has been used okay whether the fuel used is petrol or diesel engine or sometimes even the modern days we have a gasoline engine and the other one is that we have the uh, uh, hybrid engines so basically it is the petrol engine diesel engine gasoline engines right and next type on which we can classify is this according to the number of strokes so to complete one cycle uh, of combustion okay how many times this piston has to move okay so there are two types one is a four stroke engine the other one is a two stroke engine a four stroke engine is what we generally use in most of the vehicles nowadays let it be a two wheeler or a four wheeler petrol engine diesel engine everything a two stroke engine uh, is that if you see the uh, older days yamaha bike uh, 100 cc 135 cc right or the olden days tvs uh, all these are two stroke engines which will be clearly indicated on the vehicle itself 2s or four stroke and so on things okay right? that is another way of classifying this so this four stroke engine can be a petrol engine which can uh, where the engine can utilize petrol or it can be a diesel engine also that's the uh, other classification sub classification for this so we will be studying this in detail about the four stroke petrol engine and four stroke diesel engine and you also have two stroke petrol engine also in your syllabus okay right so then the next type is based on the method of ignition okay we have seen that in an ic engine combustion should take place so how does this combustion take place by what means what is the uh, starting point for this right so one method is by making use of a spark ignition or making use of a spark plug okay so that will be used only in petrol engines okay. spark plug is being used only in petrol engines okay which will generate the spark so that the fuel inside the engine will uh, will will undergo this combustion process whereas in compression engine there is no spark plug at all no spark plug is being utilized they will only uh, combustion will take place only because of the uh, compressed nature of the piston and the fuel is compressed to such a high pressure and temperature so that it will undergo combustion process right so the next type is that we have according to the type of uh, combustion cycle yeah according to the type of combustion cycle so navin mama mujhe mama le puchra lo ga we have petrol engine and diesel engine so but petrol engine is the type of fuel that we are going to use in a petrol engine we are going to use petrol diesel engine uh, diesel fuel for diesel engine illa illa martara but only uh, expensive uh, sir but but uh, the uh, nature in which this combustion will take place is little bit different okay so for a petrol engine it will undergo auto cycle and for a diesel engine it will undergo diesel cycle that is in a petrol engine the combustion takes place at constant volume and in diesel cycle the combustion takes place at constant pressure so we will be seeing this also once when we study the petrol engine and diesel engine working so there you will see what is this auto cycle how is this diesel cycle so just remember for the time being that auto cycle is used in for petrol engines where the combustion will take place at constant volume and for diesel engine okay it will be undergoing combustion at constant pressure right so the next thing is is that uh, the number of cylinders that the vehicle is going to have okay so it can be any equipment or vehicle which will either have a single cylinder engine or a multi cylinder engine 
say for example for a single cylinder engine uh, it is the uh, all our two wheelers let it be scooty activa or bikes most of the bikes uh, splendor or pulsar whatever it is they are all single Michael. cylinder it is got only single piston cylinder okay nothing else but multi cylinder engine so if you see a in a car or a truck there will be one engine which will have more than one piston it will have generally in a cars generally there are three pistons in trucks there are 8 12 16 and so on right i'll show you this multi cylinder engine later on. okay right yes. next one is according to the arrangement of cylinders so there are three types i'll just move on to the other uh, one I'll just come back to this yes so what you can see over here is an inline engine at the same time just see this is one piston piston number 2 3 and 4 so there are two, this is the entire thing is one engine okay and there are four pistons so this is a multi cylinder engine because they, it has got four pistons if it's a single cylinder engine there will be only one engine with only one piston that's all not more than that so once it exceeds more than one it is going to be a multi cylinder engine now coming to the type of arrangement of this pistons okay right so the first thing is an inline engine so if you look at this there's a common crankshaft and for on each portion of this crankshaft there is one piston that has been mounted piston number 1 2 3 and 4 right so there are all these pistons are parallel to each other just look at this there's a this piston is parallel to this one this one and this one so this is an inline engine right so the next one is going to be a radial engine a radial engine will have a common crankshaft again but the piston will not be each of this piston will not be parallel to each other it will be in a radial in 360 degrees okay it can be any number it can be 4 or 8 it can be even three pistons also you, you can have only one piston here two and three right so you where you where we would have seen this is that we would have seen this in uh, the uh, glider planes okay or the or in the older days planes we can see this where over here the fan used to be placed and they used to start rotating this so there is one engine over here 2 3 and 4 so all this engines sorry the pistons that is mounted on a radial manner around the 360 degrees is a radial engine right so next one we have v engines okay so some of you have this uh, uh, following of this motorcycles and all these things so if you take up this uh, uh, high end uh, two wheelers like ducati and all those things they'll have this v engine you can see two piston cylinders okay in v angle okay one will be here the other one will be at a, and this angle will generally be at 60 degrees between these two right so this is a v v engine so this can be again uh, in a multi uh, multi cylinder also so they you can have uh, once again in parallel to this a set of engines one after the others like this itself all of them connected by a common crankshaft the other type of uh, uh, piston cylinder arrangement is the opposed engine that means both these pistons will be in opposite directions you will have one piston here which is marked in red color there is another piston over here marked in blue color and each one of them they can either have a common crankshaft or an individual crankshaft so that the combustion will be here at this center so both these pistons are opposed to each other right so this piston will move forward this piston will also move in the towards the left hand side so thereby they they work in a particular manner so this is another way of uh, this uh, opposed engine also that is there where it can be classified so this is the Uh, type of uh, arrange uh, cylinder arrangements that is what we just saw now inline cylinder or parallel engines radial engines v engines and opposed engines okay and the last classification is that we have about the the cooling method okay 
so this uh, in what manner this engine is going to be cooled is what we have to see so one is air cooled engines the other one is going to be water cooled engines so all our two wheeler uh, engines let it be tvs scooty activa whatever any two wheeler most of the time all these are air cooled engines so you can see some kind of on this cylinder you can see a fins that has been extruded with thin metallic fillets those are the fins okay so that will be in place right so water cooled engines uh, uh, before coming to that uh, they will also have this uh, oil cooled engines also if you take up pulsar 220 and ktm bikes and all they have clearly written oil cooled engines right so the cooling of this so there is liquid cooled yeah liquid cooled so it is generally oil no liquid can be anything it can be water or oil Oh, right. So over there, what they'll do is they need to extract so much of heat. So only air passing onto this engine is not enough. So it will become extremely hot because there are multiple uh, cylinders or the combustion is so high that it will get heated up so much uh, rapidly. So it has to maybe maintained at the appropriate temperature for running good running conditions. Okay. So thereby to we have to extract this heat at a faster pace. so thereby what we have to do is we have to circulate water among this uh, around this engine so that is why if you see you will have this uh, radiator in a car or a truck right so they will have to pour water because this water gets heated because this water is going to flow over this uh, uh, surrounding this engine and it is going to uh, carry away this heat right so in those cases those type of engines will be called as water cooled engines okay which will generally have a radiator and uh, that things is that clear yes any doubts no sir any doubts no sir no sir no sir no sir all right uh, no sir no sir no sir no sir no sir no sir all right so no sir 